looking at urban systems, urban planning, urban green spaces, everything urban from topic 8 to the new specification from 2024 onwards. So first of all, we need to know what an urban area is. Well, an urban area, hopefully pretty obviously, is a city or town and the region that surrounds it, which we call the suburbs. It's where the population is linked together by social and economic interactions. It's where most inhabitants are in non-agricultural jobs. It's a built up agglomeration. Um, Sorry, my computer's not moving there. It's a built up agglomeration of human settlements in great infrastructure. And generally, it's got a high dense population and environmental pressures, and it's created through urbanisation. It can be efficient if well planned. So urban areas, and you can have well-planned urban areas, which can be efficient, allow green infrastructure into the city, um, and therefore it can give lots of benefits. Poorly planned areas um, may result in increased pollution. They can become heat islands. They can um, prevent soil infiltration, and therefore they can also lead to the increase of natural resources. So the term urbanisation means a shift from rural areas to urban areas. And you can see from the graph here, in all parts of the world, really, this has happened over time. And you can see the increased populations in urban areas. The reason for this is basically that <coughs> as um, the world has become more industrialised, secondary industries such as manufacturing jobs drove people to the cities. And then later on, tertiary industries such as services and maternity industries have also developed in the cities. People perceive them as having a higher pay, better education, better health care, better entertainment these days as well in the cities and obviously better communication. So even things like Wi-Fi, broadband, internet, things like that, uh, people seek out and therefore that's going to always probably be better in the cities. Um, across the world you can see here the um, urban areas are in the blue and the sort of uh, and ready sort of colour is where the majority of people still live in rural areas. Um, only 1% of global land is actually built up. This means the cities need to be operated sustainably. But if we did operate them sustainably, actually that would be a benefit for the whole of the planet. So again, there are lots of push factors pushing people out of um, uh, rural areas into urban areas and pulling people into those urban areas. So that idea about there being inadequate jobs in the countries countryside and rural areas, bad education because there's not as many schools accessible, poor health care, issues like that, are things that push someone out of a rural area. And things that pull people into cities is the idea of improved standard of living, better health care, uh, increased wage opportunities, um, better employment opportunities, more schools to choose from, so therefore hopefully higher education quality um, and increased future um, prospects. Um, so this is the idea of this, that this might therefore cause this change. So there's another list here of just reasons why people may move to cities. Just notice there are some that link to eco ecological things you've done before. So, so soil erosion, desertification, pollution, which means that the agricultural um, lifestyle may not be possible anymore in certain places. And I think this one's important as well. Mecha mechanisation of jobs in agriculture, meaning less people are needed to work in agriculture. Well, the perception of this idea of better education, better health care, better wages, better state of living isn't always truthful and often where there's a high influx of migrants from the countryside into the cities it puts a great pressure on the areas of the cities um, and people who can't afford to live in the maybe nicer areas of the cities. Unemployment rates can be high and no jobs, meaning migrants get paid less and it might not be um, legally, um, the pay might be below the legal standards. Um, housing may be uh, more poor quality and therefore the standard of living can be extremely low um, regardless of the perceptions. 
So the idea of this urbanisation um, means that cities need to be planned and be more efficient. And the UN's Sustainable Development Goal 11 is the idea they want to um, plan to make cities safe, inclusive, resilient and sustainable. Now, in the UK as an example, but also around the world, there is actually also a shift now from urban areas back to rural areas, particularly following the pandemic. This is called de-urbanisation um, and it could be the following pull factors. So in the countryside, there are often um, lower living expenses. That's not always the case, but it, it can be true if um, there's less chance to get jobs, less chance to go to schools, etc. So therefore, less people want to live there and the prices of houses, for example, might be lower. The houses you get are often going to be bigger with bigger gardens and there's going to be a lower population density probably less pollution because you've got that lower density of population um, people might just dislike the urban life they might seek new industrial opportunities which often open in the in the countryside where industrial sites can be built it might be quieter and safer and it might be that they can live in the country but uh, can get into the city by do, having good links to um, the city for work the other part of that is people wanting to move to urban area, rural areas but can't actually get all the way out so they live in what we call the suburbs initially these areas might be villages around cities but then the urban sprawl occurs which means they grow bigger and bigger and they become um, the suburbs of the cities so you see here why these things might happen so it might be easier to go and live those places because there might be fewer planning restrictions they might have higher average incomes there might be cheaper fuel there um, but on the other side it can also cause issues as well so what are the impacts then of it well the impacts are the suburbia house suburban house prices might increase the original habitants might not be able to live there and they might have to move into the cities to get cheaper housing um, the inhabitants work in the city during the day so they might not actually use the local services so the local services might actually close because they're not being used because the local people now are traveling into the city to work during the day and coming back only for night times um, there might be increased demand on services such as restaurants cinemas etc um, agricultural land might become sold for homes and there might be increased congestion and pollution from commuters if it's not properly planned the direct impact then on the habitat could be habitat loss or deforestation resulting in a loss of biodiversity. Um, you might have that interconnection with cities which actually drives um, invasive species into areas and that can cause problems uh, for native wildlife. Natural cycle disruptions such as the hydrological cycle can impact the reproduction of species. You might get urban heat islands if it's not effectively planned. Infiltration because less impermeable services because we're covering the soil in concrete. The increased levels of pollution um, and a loss of agricultural land which means food prices could go up. So the following consequences may have impact on the environment. Um, the city but some wildlife has thrived in the cities we can actually use the city to provide food shelter um, and protection for predators for animals and therefore some wildlife has generally been successful successful urban species generally are omnivores meaning they'll eat pretty much anything uh, they're not fussy eaters they're not fussy about being in shelters the tolerance human disturbances and adaptive and change behavior to fit the environment so city foxes would be a good example you need to be able to de demonstrate and talk through an urban system. So you can see here the urban system. So that's the boundary of the city there. We've got the inputs to so the water, the electrical supplies, etc. Going into different areas of the city and then things going in and out of the city as well. This is not a perfect example, but you need to be able to maybe draw a urban system. So how can we make our cities greener? Well, currently cities are not sustainable because of high populations. This leads to high waste, high pollution, high energy consumption, high resource consumption. But what we want to try and do is maybe have a greener infrastructure. And this is the idea of introducing natural, semi-natural areas into cities, um, such as trees along the roads, uh, green roofs, 
parks, lakes and wetlands. The benefit of this is it increases the longevity of exterior surfaces against weathering and sunlight so the plants will protect them with green roofs that actually provides insulation and protection against extreme heat. It also therefore reduces the need for air conditioning um, and with green roofs obviously the green plants are absorbing carbon dioxide. You can even grow food on the roofs. All these roofs in every city could be used for that and water could be absorbed from um, storms with less goes into the drains, less surface runoff and and therefore less flooding in cities and cities like London particularly have been affected in recent years by flooding. Improved transport in cities is vital in case of 20 75% of carbon monoxide pollution and 27% of greenhouse emissions are emitted in cities. How can we improve this? Well we can improve public transport, metro systems, uh, systems incentivize public travel, use electric vehicles, um, incentivise carpooling, do congestion charging. For example, London, the traffic is reduced by 33% since that's been introduced. We can use parking and traffic controls and encourage use of public transport. We can look at emissions and again how we can reduce the emissions in cities um, because urbanisation is a massive part of this and that's either through construction where 35% of the city's emissions are released or transport where 27% is. Construction particularly rather than rebuilding we can recondition old buildings um, to stop the extra concrete needed to be used. And we can obviously make buildings more sustainable um, by adding uh, things to use less energy, more insulation um, and more natural local materials to be used. The urban ecosystem then has many impacts on biodiversity. So transports can make, as we said, we can facilitate entry of uh, alien species. Different chemical properties can cause issues and so winds can cause uh, wind turbulence can be caused by how the buildings are designed. Fragmentation of natural systems can happen depending on the planning of the building and microclimates due to urban conditions can also occur such as heat islands which can affect the life that lives there. So urban planning should be designed um, so that it's sustainable and meet the needs of all stakeholders. So when we're planning urban planning, we need to make sure that it has a holistic approach. And the idea is we should try and integrate natural and human environments together um, and also make them more compact, reducing the need for cars and energy usage. So one thing is something called biophilic design, which is the idea of bio meaning biology, living things, philic meaning liking biology. So it's a concept of aiming to increase the connectivity between humans and the natural environment, which has been proven to improve physio physiological and psychological health and use lots of ways on this PowerPoint you can look at, which will show you how this can be done. So this has been done in Singapore, um, where they've created extensive interconnected green spaces throughout the city. They've used linear parks throughout the city so people can walk through the whole city in green spaces. And they've educated citizens how to maintain green spaces and they've encouraged and created vertical gardens and sky gardens in skyscrapers. The benefits of this have been seen because plants reduce stress and can improve air quality. They can also maintain temperature and fight against climate change. They can increase economic benefits because more visitors go to see these places. Worker productivity has been seen to increase and even crime has decreased in these areas. Environmental, obviously, you can use wolf storage because if you've got green roofs, the water can be stored. If you've got cities with country parks in them, they've all got areas where water can be absorbed into the soil. The use of grey water means for plants means less water then enters the sewer system. The plants can act as biofilters. They can reduce the heat island, increase biodiversity, absorb carbon dioxide, regulate the temperatures and more people like it. So they're walking meaning less emissions. So you can see how the biophilic design can benefit both health and economic and environmental factors.